<laughs> Hello and welcome to the select board meeting for December 27th, 2022. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. We have the select board present minus Mark Pendergast. We have the town manager, town clerk, and members of the public and presentations to come. Um, let's stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from December 13th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. No second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right, minutes are approved. Uh, we have our first public comment. Any members of the public wish to make a comment? I will close the first public comment. Uh, we have a public hearing for the adult use marijuana storefront license renewal of Silver Therapeutics. Is anybody here for that? Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Josh Silver. I'm uh, the founder of Silver Therapeutics, and we are here uh, seeking a renewal of our license from the town of Berwick to continue to operate. Um, we've been open since uh, what, April? Of March of uh, of this year, and uh, it's been going great. I mean, it's really um, we've had no complaints from any of our neighbors. Um, our um, customers seem uh, very happy, and um, you know we have uh, uh, other stores in in Maine. We've got one in South Portland and in Portland that are continuous sources of misery for me. But um, <laughs> this uh, this Berwick location has been a dream. So we're just uh, grateful that we're here and, and looking forward to a, another great year. Terrific. Uh, James, has there been any complaints from the public, from the police, any issues? Got no active um, violations. I did have some comments from some of the neighbors from, from turnarounds. I think they put in some signage of their own. Did you get any feedback from, from those neighbors? No, I haven't. Um, that's actually the first I've heard of it. I've, I mean, um, Adam, have you heard? No, yeah. no. Um, so it's, it's feedback I received several months ago sounds like they put in their own signage uh, like i said that mm -hmm. i have not heard from them since but i just wanted to put that out there but other than that uh no complaints from the operations there's no no active violations at this time any questions from mr silver um i haven't heard any complaints is um is i've asked a few people in the neighborhood and uh they said most of the time they can't even tell us there. So there's uh, nice, quiet neighbors. Thank you. All right. Terrific. I will hear a motion. We'll make a motion that we renew the storefront license for Silver Therapeutics at 60 Route 236. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? You're all set for another year. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Next December. Happy holidays. Hey, happy holidays to you too. All right. We have no reports from committees. We have no department reports. Um, appointment, presentation, and other guests. We have Maine Water Company. Uh, please step up. Maybe we should have James just give a little background yes. about why they're here. Yes, sure. please. So, town Water Department. Uh, we've been faced with some challenges with operations and staffing. Um, finding a level four operator has been challenging, and we've had ads out for the better part of six months to a year. Um, so the town is considering contract with Maine Water for them to take responsibility for operations. This includes day-to-day -day reading meters, customer service billing. Um, we do uh, understand that this is a, a substantial change uh, so tonight, the purpose of tonight is for an initial Q&A with the board, maybe a, a quick presentation, and we intend on holding a more formal presentation three weeks from now. Um, I think we'll probably get more into the process and procedure as we want to get the word out as far as <coughs> for this change. Um, I have 
uh, heard back from three of Maine Water's references, Waldeboro, Freiburg, and Vinyl Haven. They all spoke very, very highly of Maine Water, and they all had similar feedback that they have a depth of knowledge, depth of staffing, resources, connections for whether it's equipment or funding sources, and they all provided a very strong recommendation to making the change. So, perfect. Great. Uh, thank you very much, James, and, and thanks to the board, especially for having us. Um, I'll share my screen. We do have a short slide deck available. Um, and like I mentioned before, we're a, we're a utility company. We're not we're not in sales. So if this makes sense for the town, we're 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 happy and excited to serve. Um, but happy to be here for the discussion anyway. So I'm going to turn on the PowerPoint and and hope that it fires up correctly. There we go. There we go. So, thank you for inviting us. My name is Mark Vinoy. I'm president of Maine Water, and Mike Cummins uh, is with us as well. Mike is in charge of all our operations across the state. Um, Maine Water is a company. We're a, we're a water utility. Um, we own and operate 12 public water systems in uh, 21 different communities across the state. Um, we serve roughly. Through those connections, a population of about 80,000 people. Um, our largest system is the Biddeford uh, Saco system. It serves Biddeford Saco, Old Orchard Point, Old Orchard Beach, and parts of Pine Point. Um, when you look across Main Water, we have 80 drinking water professionals uh, serving these different communities. And what what I get excited about with Main Water is these guys, these guys and women are just passionate about what they do. They, they, they love what they do. They make quality water. They love the customer service aspect of it. And they deliver in the communities that we serve. Um, we do a survey every year of our customers. And that's something that's really important to us is the customer service side. And we look at um, world-class levels of customer service at anything over 85%. And we typically get results in the 90s uh, in the communities that we serve. You know, these are local people who care about the community and deliver each day. Um, here's a map of, of our operations areas. And this, this includes, on this map, in, in, uh, in blue are the uh, systems that we own. And in green are the contract-operated systems. So you see a mix there, and then we've called it out on the right-hand side as far as the ones uh, where we actually have contracts. So we do a fair amount of sewer billing for towns where we own the water system, but we build a sewer side for them. So we have contracts for that. We do a combination of billing, customer service, accounting, and operations in a number of different communities listed at the bottom there. So you have Vinyl Haven, Freiburg, Tenants Harbor, uh, the town of Waldeboro, which is a town-owned system there, and then the Port Clyde Water District. Turn to Mike on the specifics of, of Berwick's situation. Yeah, so um, I think what, you know, uh, uh, an agreement and a contract that we've, that we've shared with, with James that, that we could offer for the town would be essentially all of the components that, that go into running a water system. So to start, it, it looks like a, it, it would be a, a two-year agreement is what we're proposing, certainly up for discussion. Um, but the, the items that it covers is, one, customer service. And, and what that means is when, when a customer has a question about their account, about the water system, about water quality, that our, that our customer service team that sits in SACO picks up the phone. Um, and then uses our s systems to deploy our team um, based on whatever the situation is. We also have the, the billing services, uh, which is it's our revenue services team. So they make sure that all of the meter reads that we would read uh, get back into our system, that the bills, that the bills go out appropriately to the, the customer based on the water rates that Berwick has in place. Um, and then we make sure and confirm that we've collected um, revenue on those bills 
um, and that if we don't, th that we go out to the, to the customer through the, the, the main the PUC phone calls and, and shut off the procedures to make sure that we collect the revenue for the town. Um, all of the administrative uh, services that go into a water department or a water district or for us a, a water company, and that's just this, that, that's the full staff in hand that sits in, in SACO. So that's our executive team, our engineering team, our water quality manager, customer service, you know, all of those things that happen in the back office. Um, one of the items that for a full contract that we typically offer, and, and on a normal year we would offer right away in this contract, but we can't right now, is the financial services. So the, the, the monthly accounting, the, the year-end accounting, um, as well as the, the, um, the, the finance expertise that's normally needed to do a, a rate file. So that is, is, is usually in our contract. We're, we're in a unique time where our controller is retiring, um, and we have a new controller on board, on board who's hiring another staff accountant. And we just, we, we would never say that we could do something if we didn't feel comfortable that we could do it. So we would need some time, but we could work that into the agreement in the future. Um, and then we have what we call the routine and non-routine services that I'll talk through a little bit. The, the non-routine services are, are all the things outside of a basic day-to-day -day water operation. If you have a, a capital investment that you need um, on-site um, expertise and project management and eyes on, whether it's a water main replacement project or a treatment project, um, or those, those emergencies that really rise above and beyond, a, a significant main break that requires more hours and resources, or a water quality issue um, that's ongoing and would require, you know, and, and we could certainly talk about that when they occur too and, and, and look back to the agreement. But then we have the routine, the, the routine operations. Um, and this is laid out in the agreement. And this is really, this is meant to be an umbrella. We certainly do some things in our other c contracts that, that maybe aren't listed in here, but, but with a straight face, we can say that's a day-to-day -day operation. So the flushing of the system that happens twice a year, making sure that the gate valves work and that they're maintained, making sure the fire hydrants work, that they're pumped out for the winter time. Um, basic leak detection that we do in all of our systems to make sure that, that the system is as tight as it can be and that we're not l losing water and money when, when the department doesn't need to be. All of the basic water quality sampling, reporting, testing to be in compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act and all the rules of the Main Drinking Water Program. Um, all things pumping and treatment facility, those day-to-day -day, um, operation components and tasks, that's all in the agreement. Um, and, and, and like I said, all other activities that are required to keep our water department treatment and distribution system in good shape. We, when we take on a contract, we, we treat it as though it is our system. Um, and we take it that seriously, that compliance is important, timeliness is important, and things need to work. Um, and as we look at the capital investment side, the things that the town would, would want to think about investing in, we also see that as our obligation to inform James or the select board or Jody um, to what we see in the system and what the town might want to consider investing in for the well-being of the of the water system. So that's that's the end of the that's the end of our short presentation. That's that's what we do, and we'd be very excited to do it for Berwick. Um, we've we proposed a two-year agreement based on the staffing and overhead that we would that we would need to do it, um, plus our our uh, our markup. Uh, it's. 22,000 a month, and so that that puts us at um, $264,000 a year. But when, as James and I have discussed before, when looking at the labor and overhead that the water department currently has in their finances, we're actually below what the water department um, has for labor and overhead right now. So. I think it may. I think it makes sense if the town's uh, ready to do it, and certainly happy to answer any questions. I have a couple questions. So we've had an issue with um, drought the last couple of years, having chemicals in the water. We've had to boil water, issue water. So are you aware of that? Yes. And 
what is your plan moving forward going into the summer of 2023? Yeah, I, um, so we, we are aware of the challenges. We are aware of the limitations of the existing facility, especially when the, when the river's low. Um, and we are aware that, that the town is working with, with Wright Pierce and with their current funding opportunity to fix the, to fix the issue. Um, the way the facility runs right now, all we can do is operate it to its full potential. Um, but we do know Wright Pierce very well. We do know Dan Flagg, the project engineer, very well. And we've actually connected with him to get an idea of what that project looks like. So we'd be able to run the current facility. My understanding is, is that there was some public n notification that went, on, that went on this past summer. And it, if that's the current case with the existing facility before the improvements, we'd be prepared to, to do those notifications to optimize the current facility, but then see the project through. Okay. All right. So the financial piece that you're saying that you cannot do, that's going to fall to who? I think it's in some cases that's Lisa. I've talked with Lisa and she's comfortable with maintaining the financial aspects of it. In terms of rate cases, we've used contractors before. We've received some funding to do it. Don't anticipate us needing to do a rate case in within a year because the rates are going up July 1, 2023. We built in a two year step. In terms of the other parts of it, I've talked with Lisa about she's okay with keeping that part of it. Okay. All right. And my understanding is, so the billing is going to go out January 1st. And, and those will be their bill in those, that month. What happens? Uh, are you going to honor any uh, payment plan agreements? I know we have several elderly people that are on our system. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be difficult and they set up payment plans to ensure that they get it paid throughout the quarter before the next billing comes. Yeah, no, we'll, so Maine Water will, will honor the Town of Berwick's terms and conditions filed with the PUC and also okay. honor the current tariffs of the, of the water department. Okay. So we'll, we'll do the administrative work, but under, under the town's, you know, re regulated guidelines of, of how to bill. Okay. And so that you would include be... payment arrangements that are already on the books. Yes. Okay. So anyone that already has one set up, you would continue those. There wouldn't That's be right. a, like a immediate notice or anything. Right. Okay. And as when it comes to the financial piece, is it, I know currently right now they don't, we don't have it. So if it's an additional piece that you offer, can people pay online? Can people, um, is it electronic or is it going to be a mail out like we currently have? Yeah, do You're a larger company, that? so yeah, I'm just wondering ahead. if yeah, you have so other the, resources. So the, 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 the billing piece it will be, it will be incorporated in our, in our agreement. So the customers currently have uh, different options. They can, they can pay by check or they can go and pay online, or they can set up an auto pay. So the Berwick customers will have all of those same options and the mm -hmm. portal will be, will be through our web, will be accessed through our website. Okay, so yep. there will be a portal for people yes. to go on. Yes, okay. Yeah, right. so just to, so, so it's the accounting piece that the town will continue to do. We'll do okay. the billing and collections. Mm -hmm. The money will flow to the town, and the town will do the accounting. Okay, and I'm just asking this, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but just asking this, you're talking about a changeover from January 1st to then the billing coming out for April 1st. So is the responsibility the towns or are you going to notify all current residents or current customers about the change? Because right now, if I write out my check for the town of Berwick water, I'm sending it to the, the town of Berwick. I'm assuming it's now going to go to you. What kind of notification are you going to get yeah, to so, current customers? So, you, so the... Obviously, the, the, the town, you know, this will, this is public information, this mm -hmm. conversation. When the, if the decision is made to go forward, we would own the, the notification piece to customers of this is where you pay your bill. This is who is operating the water system. And you would do that? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, now, the, uh, in terms of the, the, the water rates and everything, we would still control that, set that price. You would essentially bill the town and we would re re reimburse and you would be paying us all of our all the water rates back to us yeah the revenues so the revenues will run to the town and then you would pay us as a contractor okay. to run okay. the system okay 
And the, yeah, the tariff will remain the way it is as it's regulated by the Public Utilities Commission. And then at that point, you know, you've got a step rate right now in some distant year when you decide to go back to the Public Utilities Commission for a change in tariff, you, you do that. Okay. Any other questions? Just one, one piece of, of information that I should add, and, and I had talked to James about this as well, is that there are some upfront conversion costs, yes. to one, one to NDS, which is our customer service system, and, and then to, to OSG, which is another component to our billing. So the total of that, that would be a, an $11,000 conversion in total. Um, we did confirm with those vendors this past week that, that they felt they felt comfortable that they'd be able to meet our deadline, allowing us to read to read meters um, per our deadline and and be able to get the bills out. So so they've they've said that they'd be able to do that. So I want to share that. So you you know you're proposing a two year contract. You know, you're familiar with our uh, plans for the plant and working with Wright Pierce. And, and that two years brings us into about the time we're supposed to get the new upgraded plants up and running. Um, at that time, is is it your intention to look to extend the contract? Or, you know? Typically, with all of our contract operations, we, we renew them at the end. Um, we, we haven't had any in the last decade plus where we've ended the contract. But that's totally up to the town, and and, and we see that as our responsibility to, to deliver. What's the length of contracts you usually want? A, a, a one to two years. One to two years yep. for, for every town? Every yes. two years you come back and, yep. and you know, ask again. Okay. okay. At the end of the two years, typically, what do you had the situation to other towns. Uh, what kind of increase in rate do you look at, like for the towns to pay? Yeah, it's typically whatever the cost of living, you know. So it's it's usually inflationary. is what we're looking at. So what our labor rates have done, you know, we need to we need to make payroll, um, and then what any of the you know the typical O and M expense increases that we've seen that roll into the contract. And just, uh, I know you sent an email, I just wanted to focus it. So we do currently have one town employee. So that employee is going to remain on. No one's going to lose their job by switching this over. They, it would be, uh, that would not be the plan. So the, it would not. No. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns, conundrums, riddles? Uh, no, I just want to say, you know, after, you know, been sitting behind the desk here for almost nine years this time around, and uh, it seems like every year we just, you know, again and again return to the water department and, you know, one problem right after another. Um, and so it sounds to me like this is a good opportunity, you know, to get, an outside look at it, you know, it's you know, been run by the town for all these years and you know, things tend to get stagnant after a while. There's a, this is a good chance for us to you know, have somebody from the outside come in and look at everything and, and really you know, give us a fresh ideas on what we can and can't do. So I, I think it's a good thing. So. <clears throat> I also feel like it's a, it's a positive step forward. It's definitely something uh, worth trying because uh, we, we we certainly had our troubles with that department as long as I can remember for various different reasons. It's never the same reason twice, but um, it seems like there's a good opportunity here to start something. Uh, you know, just get some get some new hands in there instead of the uh, the old ones that are, haven't been able to deal with the problems before. Um, but yeah, uh, there's definitely some things um, to iron out. Um, the 
mo one of the uh, concerns that I have is to make sure that we have customer data that stays with us in case there's an issue on your end with your contractors or uh, we decide not to continue the contract. We still have all that data that we can switch over to and we're not just start from scratch. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I also feel like a, a great addition if we if we go this route is that we need to put a computer out in the town hall where people can go and just like it just says pay your water bill over here and it just they can handle it over there for people that don't have access to the internet and are used to going into the town hall and just paying exactly, yeah. on a regular basis you know um, that way at least they can get it you know at least for the first billing cycle or two they're able to figure it out and you know we don't leave them hanging just they come into the water to, they come into the town hall to pay and they're just like I don't I haven't used a computer you know <laughs> yeah exactly we have That's those great we have those yeah. people we have custom we have, we have citizens that they're not computer literate or they don't have a computer or they don't have the internet and this is going to be a, a a big change for them so we need to make sure that it's accessible to pay their bill the way they are used to at least in spirit um but yeah um I'm sure there's going to be growing pains if we go this way, you know, customer service and getting meters read and everything accurate. Uh, but I, from what I've heard, as Shame said, from other towns, um, you have a decent reputation with those towns, and certainly nobody that we contacted spoke out and said that it was a it was a sham and a bad idea. So that's always good. You know, I sure hope not. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's good to hear. And and you know it, the I think as we set up this agreement, the important thing to remember is that it's Berwick's water system, so communication is the best thing that we can do. So, how however the select board or the town manager or the public works director wants to be updated on what's going in the in the water system, let's you know if we go this route, let's set that up in the beginning. So we can get that communication going. I think that's really been a success for other contracts is is informing, you know, those who own the water system what's what's going on. Because that, that can take it in the form of just communicating with Jody and I, or it can take it in the form of a, like a citizens mm -hmm. advisory board or committee. I don't know how formalized we, it is. We, we, we've done both. Yeah, we, we have both. We have both. Depends on the community. I think I think uh, direct communication with. Uh, Public Works and the town manager on a regular basis, you know, is the best way to, you know, keep the town informed and then occasionally appearing yeah, here. We, you know, biannually or annually, or annually just going yeah. in and doing a quick update so that we have it on the record how things are going, especially in the first two years. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and just, a, you know, a public record of this is where things are going. You know, again, I, I think that this is the... A move in the right direction. We've had multiple issues. This is, I, I think, you have the resources and the ability to, um, uh, you know, to handle it. My only concern is communication because we do, as Noah said, we have a lot of elderly, and this is going to be brand new. This is not just changing the electrician or that. This is a major utility, and I get that, but they're not all going to be looking at the agenda or this and that, and so. We need to make the extra effort excessively in the first and second billing cycle to just say, hey, this is who we are, this is what's going to happen, this is how you pay your bill, and they're not going to get it on the first time. It may take the second and the third time um, until they get used to it, especially some of our, our older citizens who are like, I, I, just, I just stop at the town hall and pay. You know, I just do this, and now i got to go online. And so, it, I mean, you're also asking, you know, Patty, they're going to come to the town hall, and if they don't, they're not computer literate, where are they going to go? They're going to go to the desk and say, can someone help me? So, you know, you should be aware of that. And I think we should put that effort out there just during, the, you know, the transition period. That's, all. again, yeah. I just think it's communication. And, and they can also, you have physical offices as well where people can go and pay if they need to. Well, and they could they can drop, you know, it, the bill will come like a regular bill that you can write a check and put it in the mail. Yeah. That's that's why, I mean, yeah, I like yeah. the fact that you can either do it online, because yeah. some people it's just easier to do it online, or automatic. If, or if they want to come to the town office and drop a, you know. Yeah, we'll get it to you, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> we can work through this. Yeah, we, yeah, we can, we can set up yeah. a Dropbox. 
I just think some people, some of our older folks might get a little confused in the first sure. yeah. cycle or two. That's yeah. all. Yep. Any other comments, questions? Just the one thing to add to it. I, I think just as a reminder to the water users, if, if we do move forward with main water, that the rates don't change. You know, the projected rate changes. Right. Nothing's going to change because of, of us moving forward. That's, you know, because I think that's the first question that any water user is going to yep. use is what's going to happen to my bill. You know, and, and I think that's just a good reminder to the public that those that are on the line, you know, anything that's there is already what's been voted on, approved, and going forward, this right. has no impact on anything that was, and, and whether any, we were to move forward or not. If anything, no it's going to save the town a little bit of money. Right. So, Correct. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on the tax rate changing, but I mean, it's still, you know, money yeah. that we're not going to be spending. Yeah. Especially when we've had issues, they have more resources to handle it. But you make a good point. The rates are going to change July 1, 2023, Correct. which is going to be only a few months after you take over. Some people are going to connect that. <laughs> yeah. And so we should be very clear in anything we put out, like BCM or fact, you guys put out, that this was already approved prior to any kind of decision. To Whether we go forward more. with that, this or not, mm -hmm. right. those rates are going to change. Right, exactly. That, this has no effect on those. Right. Um, terrific. I really appreciate the presentation yeah. um, and all the information. We will probably gather some more questions for ourselves. And in two weeks, three weeks, I can't remember, I think it's two weeks, but uh, next meeting, we will have a public hearing. The public he public can come out, express any concerns or, or congratulations, you know? And uh, we'll have some more questions and we'll try to get it all hammered out and uh, find out if we're gonna approve it or not. So. I do have one more question. You, I know you just—it was only a couple of slides, but there was some great information. Can you send those or get those yeah. to us? Yeah, well, I can send them as well. Leave this with yeah. right now. All right, thank James, you. James, I'll, I'll send them to you. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah, just because if you know people ask us, I can you know we have something to point to. That's sure. <coughs> well, thank you for your time this evening. No, appreciate thank it. You very and, much. Uh, we uh, really appreciate it. Look forward to the public hearing. Thank I'll you. I'll send the electronic out as well. All right. We will see you in a couple weeks then. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Good point about the building. All right. Yeah, no, that was the first thing I had. And then you kind of, um, I think just a reminder to the public too, if anybody is not going to be at that meeting and wants to have questions answered, please send yep. them to any one of us right. prior to so that we can get that Any Anybody asked. sitting up here or the town clerk, send right. us questions. <laughs> concerns yes. we will look over them before the meeting and we'll get them addressed yep. in that meeting good all right we have no unfinished business we have town managers report <coughs> so speaking of water i'll throw Thank something Thank you guys. out Appreciate there it. just to get a pulse on what you're thinking there's been considerations of taking fluoride out of the public water system which would be our call to make and it would drop our water plant from a level four to level three. Is this something we want to try to take on and do a straw poll if the community would be interested in it? Or no. should we kind of just hold yeah. off? And I don't think that that's worthwhile. So. I, mean, it, I mean, maybe it's a discussion to have if we decide not to go with main water, you know, and we really can't find a level four operator. But, um, I mean... There's a lot of benefits to mm -hmm. it in the long term, so I, I don't think we should do that. And it would be a major change that they would associate with, oh, look, you're going to send it to Main Water, now we're not going to have yeah, it. Yeah, it's something that and, no, I know I've it. heard we were kicking around for the past year or so, so I figured I'd at least throw it out there. Okay, thank you for the feedback on that one. Um, next thing I have, just an update on the edge. Phase one is complete. Phase two is going very strong. Eight my, Main Street foundations in. Um, three businesses are ready to move into 12 Sullivan Street later this winter into the spring. Um, eight Main Street's a mixed use building slated for completion in the summer of 2023. My main focus for bringing um, this forward is I just want to make sure that we're, we can do what we can to keep the momentum going across the street. Um, Great Falls has been. Um, investing pretty heavily into the site. They invested, which was essentially public infrastructure, they inherited uh, to upgrade the um, culvert. They're going to upgrade off Wilson Street in the 60 inch pipe going through their site. Um, 
they will be paying several hundred thousands of dollars to uh, sewer fees. They'll be paying a couple hundred thousand dollars in residential impact fees. And they're also gonna be responsible for several hundred thousand dollars of traffic mitigation, which fair enough, that's what they signed up for. Um, tonight, I'm just asking um, for direction or see if it would be a good idea to work on an MOU solely for the infrastructure impact fees to say that the infrastructure impact fees we collect from the site, we're gonna invest back in to the edge site, which that would take form in sidewalks around their site or getting the utilities on the ground or some of the infrastructure improvements that are required or intersection improvements as well. So that, um, the other part of the MOU is there are, uh, with the earmark funding the town received for $3.1 million, uh, DOT in their traffic movement permit is requiring them to do some upgrades. <coughs> we were planning on doing those upgrades anyways. So we put that in the MOU of, of, of parsing out what the town will be responsible for and that the impact, those infrastructure impact fees will be reinvested back right into that core downtown area. And I'll just throw out, this will have no impact on rec impact fees, this is just infrastructure impact fees. It always been my understanding that that's what we're gonna use the impact fees for anyways. Yeah, we don't but, have MOUs yeah. with anybody else that takes and, and puts and, a business. Yeah. No, we, we, you know, when we talked about this, about, you know, putting the impact fees in, you know, we had the discussion of the money we want to come in is to put in the sidewalks mm -hmm. on the opposite sides of where they're building to do those improvements anyways, you know, so is, uh, it, I don't, I don't have a problem with the memorandum of understanding about it, but, you know, just like I said, is I thought our intention was to put it all back in there anyways. You know, and the impact fees we collect have to be used within the downtown district anyways, correct? Yeah. Right. right. So it has to be in the... I mean, so it's already that was, there. That's already, yeah, I, I thought that was just something to help yeah. build that up anyways, especially yeah. as we add so, that extra yeah. street in the And just as a point of clarity, is it memorandum, memorandum of understanding, is it is it binding? I mean, if we make one, yeah, it's a, is, it, is it just like, this is our intention, but... You know, like, or is it like? It's a good. Yeah, I think that. I think, for me, the way that I would understand it is just something in writing that this is our intention. You know, this is our goal. Right, but I mean, are we setting a precedent for any, for any other person? I mean, this is obviously a large project. I get that, but there are other businesses that are going to come in that are going to fill in over time, and so we already have a directive with the impact fees for them to be utilized in the downtown area. So now you're, are you looking just to codify that? Um, are you gonna do that with anybody else that comes in and pays um, impact fees? Are you gonna do an MOU with this, those businesses as well? I mean, we just sold yeah, that. Yeah, cause that's, I mean, I, I think to piggyback Linda, I think that would be something you would just throw back the planning and, and the stipulation of, of a site, you right. know, instead of going an MOU route, just saying this is what, you know, that, that site's gonna look like and this is what that responsibility is. And, uh, and it is our responsibility to make sure the sidewalk, we want those yeah, there. Yeah. Well, I'm just remembering, like, we had this, we had a conversation a while back about, like, it, the impact fees of, like, an apartment building, where, like, then we have to upgrade the sidewalks out in front of it and stuff like that. That's why the impact fees are greater for Correct. those kind of buildings yeah. and things right. like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of hand in hand, where, like, yeah, they're they're building these, you know, this, this entire, you know, complex for lack of a better term they, yeah, and yeah we're gonna have to upgrade the stuff around it we're not gonna leave it like a wooded area <laughs> like we have to we were gonna upgrade it and it's always been the goal to upgrade the sidewalks yeah. dig one hole you know all the utilities underground and all that stuff so i mean like it's all heavily connected and it's all part of the same overall goal yeah when they go to the planning board those are put it right in there. I mean, it's what the impact fees are for. If they're afraid that we're just gonna, they're gonna build this thing and we're just gonna be like, nah, we got the thing and now we're not gonna worry about the sidewalks and the roads <laughs> or the utilities or anything. And it's like, I mean, that would be that would, be, yeah. that would be a very poor choice on our part since the whole goal was to revitalize the area, <laughs> you know? You just wanna Ooh. be careful that they're not restricting 
Yeah. So what, if they say, well, you, you, we want the sidewalks to only go to here, and as a town, we decide we want them to go another 100 feet. If you have an MOU, you're locked in. Yeah, I that, mean, that's that's my only my, – my concern is just that we're going to put it on a – Put put it somehow in, into writing, and then like you know, block ourselves into what we now we can only spend this money in this area on that instead of having a more robust choice. Yeah, right. you know, I don't want I don't want to pigeonhole ourselves to something that you know where we were going to do anyway, but now we've limited ourselves somehow. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. yeah, I, 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 would, I would think I would think honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd be, be interested in seeing one written out. You know, just to see what the proposals are, but is, um, but like I said, is is you no know, when, you know, is uh, you know, I, I was the one that pushed for the impact fees from the start, and that was because is we wanted to invest the money in the downtown, right? Correct. Yeah. I got, yeah, I hear. I think they're all good points. Just I think when the general ledger comes down on what Great Falls has invested in the community and what we've invested in. Just making sure that it's it's fair because they are upgrading a lot of our. But our, but our, doesn't our impact fee policy pretty much illustrate that it has to be used in the downtown area, which is basically circling the whole area. Yeah, basically, and and also it, they it, are getting a tiff as well. Right. So you know that it's it's not. They they are getting the benefits of the of the of the of the situation as well. I'm not saying we're not going to get it. We're going to get it too, but you know, they they yeah, they are going to get all right the benefits the that we can give. You know, yeah. because we want to we want to have a vibrant downtown. We want to have places for people to live and work and and to trout walk. We want people to be able to walk around the downtown without right. And I, I like just read what Noah says. You don't want to be pigeonholed because if you do it once. Now anybody else that builds enough, they're going to want the same thing. Well, you can build a sidewalk, but only in front of my business, you know. And then you just you're going down that MOU route. Yeah. When the impact fees, the policy itself is pretty clear. It needs to be utilized mm -hmm. downtown. If they want to write one up, we'll take a look at it. But I mean, I don't feel strongly enough. I don't feel very strongly about pushing for it. So okay, makes sense to me. I think they'll appreciate hearing that it's kind of insinuated that's the direction we're heading in anyways. Last piece I have, uh, there's been a lot of correspondence going back and forth about the the gun range off of One Mirth Road. We received a letter from the North Burger Select Board expressing their concerns on behalf of the board and concerned citizens. Um, I've been in contact with a neighbor since July, um, and I have reached out to the gun range. Uh, the gun range has um, restricted some of their hours. They and they are working on minor improvements, and they've shown a willingness to work with the neighborhood. Um, depending on the neighbor, I think there's a range of tolerance for the gun range. There are neighbors that are really looking to find a collaborative approach. There's there's others that are pretty fed up and have been dealing with it for many years. Um, Irish has been uh, working with the gun range and investigating and going through the code process. Um, she has reached out to a safety inspector and seeing if she can arrange an inspection to ensure that the gun range is up to the safety standards. Um, there have been reports of a barn that was hit and a garage that was hit. And if you look on a map, you can see that the gun range is straight on with Randall Road. But the issue is until someone has, from my perspective, from a code perspective, who's going to say that that bullet came from the gun range without a doubt? How, how, do, we, how do we prove that? Uh, even with that said, I think there's enough interest and the gun range has shown a willingness to work with the neighborhood. The, select board, the Bur uh, North Burrough Select Board at the end of the letter said, uh, should the board wish to meet, they would welcome the opportunity. 
So I don't know if that's the, the call to action where we get everybody together and discuss it as a group and, and see where that goes. Um, in terms of, you know, the things that have, we've seen in reports, I've been talking with Dwayne, town manager of North Berwick. Um, it's been confirmed there's been a bullet found in the horse barn and the garage, but um, there's no report of bullets whizzing by people. I don't know if that's a new one to me. I don't see any police report that's backed that up. Um, so that's kind of the quick synopsis of it. Are there any outstanding questions or anything that you want me to follow up on? Uh, beyond okay. the general complaints, um, which I uh, like, yeah, we have we have the letter from we have a letter from the town of North Berwick. We have the letter from the uh, concerned citizens. We have uh, a letter from Irish, and basically they all refer to the same three incidents over the past, I think, sixteen years. I think one was one was labeled from two thousand six or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. um, beyond though, beyond this, I mean, is the gun range in compliance with the town ordinance? In, in terms of the state state law, and that's kind of what we defer to from our understanding, and we've checked with legal a couple different times. They are in compliance. They're, the state statute is very specific about noise, and it says we cannot use our noise ordinance for gun range that's been permitted in, in existence. Uh, we can't put anything retroactively on them. In terms of, um, there's a provision in there about use and activity, and that's specifically referring to, from the feedback that we've got, about the actual structure of the gun range, if they out of the lane. Um, there have been cases about increased activity, which we believe objectively, there's probably more, mem there's more members that can be objectively proven that from our research is not enough to prove increased level of, yeah. um, I don't know if the, the state statute is a change in use or expansion of activity. Nothing in this section limits the ability of municipality to regulate the location and construction of a new sport shooting range or substantial change in use. So, substantial change in use initially went to, you know, entry increased activity. That is not, again, our research. The other part is safety, which obviously if we could prove that the bullets came from the gun range and they're making it on the way to Randall Road, then that has some serious, would have some serious legs to it. Just not sure how we prove that the, and, and who would say that the bullet came from that gun range. So from our perspective, beyond a voluntary reduction in hours or, you know, amount of activity, there's nothing substantial that we can do as the town. I think the best the best option may be getting maybe getting together with North Berwick, inviting the gun range and just sit, pull the workshop and see what they're willing to commit to. But in terms of forced action or violations, it'd be it, at this point, I, I'm not sure if there was a violation um, and we're going to continue investigating and looking into it. There's something we believe there's enough to warrant a violation. We'll go down that route. But at this point, um, I have not seen anything that warrants that type of action. Well, I would have no problem with meeting with the the uh, the gun range members or and maybe or a workshop, whoever, public workshop. Yeah, if they want if they want to come to a meeting, if they want to do a public workshop, if we want to do a public workshop with North Berwick, I mean, which whichever route is is best. Um, 
but I, I you know I mean, even then, it's voluntary. Yeah, on, it's going to on, on the club at, yeah, because at, it's at not best, even something yeah. they have to address. At best, um, we can just say, you know, we would prefer it if you could limit the amount of activity or put up better screening or something to make sure that no bullets are leaving the property. But again, it's and, and generally, if with the amount that the the people are saying that they fire, the idea that three bullets went astray in 16 years is yeah, pretty I think is the, a pretty small sample size of the situation. I can fire more bullets in five minutes in my backyard. You know, it's like, it's so... It's, yeah, but the club the club seems to be very receptive to... Correct, and, and I think the club's to handgun neighbors. only, too, so... Yeah, so I think they'd I mean, be open to a workshop just because they've been trying yeah, to I mean, find even, a resolution. Even handgun only, though. I mean, like, how, 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 long, how large is the range in that, terms of the property? Right. I mean... Well, it's not huge, it, you know, but you know the way it's set up is you know the 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 range itself the is only you know hundred yards or so for the actual range, but you know they have the the I haven't been there for many many years, but you know they have the the clubhouse or whatever there and things. But I mean, know. a, a <clears throat> nine millimeter bullet can't go <laughs> can't go very far beyond that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so. maybe somebody out there with a you know. 50 caliber and got it so that I'm not sure but it's um yeah if, if 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 they're willing to come to a meeting and talk to us about it I think mm -hmm. that'd be you know the uh, pretty much our best option to do anything maybe we just invite North Fair and invite the, sure. neighbors, like the neighbors too yeah yes. just oh, yeah, everybody's a thing if, if, if they yeah. want to do a public workshop and, and have us mediate it you know, just to, our facilitator. Do, do it, in, it, do it here so that know. we can put it out over the air. And, okay. You know. There's no decisions. It's public workshops, I mean, so there's yeah. no decisions, but at right. least maybe bring them all to the table. You know. And, and I mean, again, that's... the club, it, it's voluntary whether they come or not, but yeah. it from seems what like we've they're seen, already trying to work with right. the neighbors. Yeah. They, 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 they the put in the effort here to try to work. The fact that they did anything is, right. you know, they didn't have to. They could very easily just be like, no, go put it out. You know, it's done. The same for Springville Gun Gun Club. You know they've been in existence for decades and decades, yeah. and you know they had the place up on uh, Route Four just out of Sanford for a long time. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I think that's now not by the airport, airport, right? Um, no, up it's, on, it was up by the um, yeah. Book of Law Band. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 that yeah. area. So um, yeah, they've been in existence for decades, and like I said, is they seem to be willing to work with people. So you know, invite them all down. All they can do is say no. Yeah. And we're no worse off now than we are then. So. Um, all right. A anything else? Or is that all? That's that's all. All right. Um, Site Board Communications. We have the aforementioned letter from the town of North Berwick and the letter from the concerned citizens about the uh, about the gun range. Uh, we have the approval of the accounts payable payroll warrants. We have a payroll warrant number 40 from December 22nd, 2022, in the amount of $78,776.38. We have the accounts payable warrant number 41 from December 27th, 2022, in the amount of $303,498.91. I move that we pay our bills. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid. New business. Transfer station fees. There's a few minor changes. Um, <coughs> adding in a provision, load size and prices are determined by a transfer station attendant, just to clarify. We're adding in a different size, smaller size, because all we have is a full size pickup load or a small size pickup load. This is a 55 gallon drum canner bag, 55 gallon, gallon drum. Just adds in a third tier there for size and then adding in rugs as part of bulking waste. So the load size and prices are determined by transfer station attendant. Is that to cut down on haggling argument? Is that what the issue is? Yeah, I mean, it, just, it's, it's up to the transfer station attendant to determine what a half load small pickup 
Love ends or what? Right. You know. Yeah. I mean, I imagine there's a lot of people that would come in there and be like, no, this is a small pickup, or this is a big pickup, this is a half a load. That's a bit, you know. And, right. The discretion should be at the yeah. transfer mm -hmm. attendant. And, you know, they don't, they absolutely do not have to dump it there, but the prices are determined, the, the, the amount is determined by the attendant. And don't give them a hard time. They have a hard enough job as it is. Right. I was there today with a line <laughs> down the road, down the hill. Yep. They're down a dumpster. That. There was not a, they were missing a container for household trash, so everybody had to go through it. They were doing a great job. They did it as quick as possible. So don't be going there and giving them a hard time. Yeah. yeah. And it's open tomorrow. Yes, it yes. is. It's open tomorrow um, for the, uh, to make up for the fact that we were closed Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, and just to throw a follow-up comment on there, too. Like, I mean, even when the attendants have to ballpark something, if anything, they usually air it down, you know, and yeah. where the town's eating more than the person dropping it off for the wait. So, really Has all these don't been, been posted? Uh, nothing has been posted publicly at this point. So Would I January 1st be too soon, then? Yeah, I mean, you got to give them notice. Yeah, I can't, we can do it. You can I mean, just push that back to Push it back to February. Days. Yeah. yeah. Just, All right. So we, these changes will be effective February 1st. Yeah. We'll just make that note. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to accept the change to the half load of the 55-gallon drum, can bag and full load specification and the large rugs with the amendment of fees going effective February 1st. A second. 2023. 2023. 2023. Yeah, that says 2022. <laughs> yes, 2023. It's going to have it for a while. <laughs> it's going to be another age before it comes back around to 2022. Uh, yes, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? There we go. And along the lines of the transfer station and the hours, uh, uh, correct it, uh, open this Saturday, close Sunday, and then open Tuesday and Wednesday next week, correct? Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. So. Thank All you. right. Uh, next, we have the Durant Road property purchase offer. We have a offer um, to uh, someone who's offering twenty thousand dollars to purchase um, property we have off of Durant Road for um, twenty thousand dollars. The pre uh, purchase offer. It's essentially a non-buildable lot, so the neighbor wants to purchase it to add it to their lot. And I believe this has to go to town vote before we can actually sell it. No. Does it? No. Does it? No. No, because we... I don't think so. No, because we, we, we can uh, sell... there was a vote once to get the board authorization. Yeah, right. didn't, we, didn't we have that with the, um, the fire station? Wasn't that the, the vote, vote that we had no, there? No, that went to vote. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, but when we sold the lot property. down on 236 across from the post office, things like that, yeah, yeah. we can dispose of the 21 election because it, it was in the same referendum as Linda and I read. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, town buildings need to go to Correct. town vote. Right. Right. Property, we have especially yeah, no. a non buildable lot. Is Excess it? property, the, we have the discretion to yeah. sell that. We can't um, sell I'd give a little bit of history on this piece. Um, is the. You go back to the town report, I think it was in 1883, they approved the money at that time to build the Durant Road. Um, and if you go up this end of the road at Diamond Hill, the road goes straight. And then for some reason, when it gets to this piece, it veered off to the left and left that little triangle there. And for the longest time, I always thought it was associated with the property next door, the Goodriches there. Well, yeah. It, was, it wasn't until a couple of years ago that I realized, I found out that, you know, we actually own that piece. It's, it's a non-buildable lot. It's you know, approximately 130 feet or so on Diamond Hill Road and three or 400 feet on Durant Road. Um, and as I said, I always assumed it just went with what was the Goodrich property back then. So, is. <coughs> Okay. All right. Is there any other questions? I would hear a motion, then, I guess. I'll make the motion that we uh, sell a piece of property. Let's see. 
Map R40, parcel 5 on the Durant and Diamond Hill Road to Robostra, Inc., Incorporated, for the amount of $20,000 with a quick claim deed. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Go. Who seconded? That was me. Oh. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, we have no quick claim deeds. We have no abatements. Second public comment. All right. Uh, no second public comment. Um, we are going to go into executive session, Title 14056A, for the discussion of personnel. We will not be making any votes in that in that uh, executive session, so we will not come back out. Uh, is there any other business, non-agenda items anybody wants to discuss? Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> um, I just want to reiterate, great job by the transfer station people. It's very busy today. I'm sure it'll be very busy tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And they, they, they were doing absolute their best to get everybody out of there as quick as possible. Um, thank you, line workers and everybody who got the power back on. I know some people had extended wait with that, and that was not a lot of fun for anybody. But uh, I think everybody has power now, right? Everybody? I'm pretty sure they Yeah, said. they remember. Yeah, your county was back up. So um, thank you to them. I hope everybody had a happy Christmas and good holidays, and we'll see you in the new year. So I move that we enter executive session under Title I, 4056A, discussion of personnel. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. 